Hello students, myself Amita Ganju. I am going to teach you about the principles of inheritance and variation today. What is inheritance? Inheritance is the study of passing of traits from parents to the next generation. And the branch of biology that deals with the study of inheritance of traits from parents to the next generation is known as genetics. Gregor Mendel was an Austrian scientist. He was an Austrian priest, in fact, and he was the one who was propounded the laws of inheritance for the first time. And uh, he studied on pea plant, that is Pisum sativum. Since he was the first one to propound the laws of inheritance, he is known as the father of genetics. He worked on Pisum sativum, that is garden pea. And why did he choose garden pea for his experiments? There are certain reasons for that. The first reason is the pea plant or the Pisum sativum is a bisexual plant. Bisexual plant means the flowers which contain both male and female reproductive organs in the same flower. Second, it had very short life cycle. Whenever we have to study the inheritance of traits or the characters, we need to study lot many generations. So if we have very long life period, it is going to take a lot of time. So one of the reasons to choose the plant for our experiments should be that it should have a very short life cycle. If you know that in pea plant, within three to four months, it completes its life cycle and the next generation can be studied in three, three to four months. So that, is an, that was the another reason that uh, he chose Pisum sativum or garden pea for his experiments. Basically, Pisum sativum is self-pollinated naturally, but it can be easily cross-pollinated. Mendel in his experiment simply cross-pollinated the Pisum sativum flowers or the pea, pea flowers in a very, very simple way. He just emasculated the flowers. Emasculation means pea flowers are naturally self-pollinated, but they are very easy to cross-pollinate. And for that purpose, he did the process of emasculation. E stands for removal. Masculine means male part. So removal of anthers from young flower when the flowers are still developing and the anthers are very young. Naturally, the pea plants are self-pollinate, self-pollinated, they are easy to cross-pollinate. Mendel, in his experiment, emasculated the flowers. Emasculation means removal of anthers from young flowers and then bringing desired pollen grains from the other plant for which we want to cross-pollinate. And this was very easily done. He took a flower and he removed the anthers in the young stage itself. Now this flower was emasculated. E means removal, masculine means male part. So the male part was removed and then the pollen grains from the desired flower were taken and they were brought to the stigma once it was ready for pollination. Before that, this particular flower was covered with a polythene bag to avoid contamination by other pollen grains or undesirable pollen grains. I just repeat it. The emasculated flower was covered with a polythene bag to avoid pollination by undesirable poll pollen grains and then it was brought, it, uh, the new pollen grains were brought to the stigma whenever the plant was receptive. In this way, he cross-pollinated a number of flowers and as a result, whatever observations were taken into consideration, those observations were penned down in the form of laws. Mendel was the first one to propound the laws of, men, um, of inheritance. Therefore, he is known as the father of genetics. The laws which he propounded were 
law of dominance, law of purity of gametes, and law of independent assortment. While propounding these laws of inheritance, he chose certain characters in his experiments and there were seven characters or seven traits. One of the traits were dominant and the other one was recessive. Dominant means that trait or that character which appears in the first generation and recessive is the trait which does not appear in first generation and it hides itself. So that is how during his experiments, he chose seven traits and out of those seven traits, one of the form was dominating and another form was recessive. For example, if you consider the height of the plant, some plants were tall and some were dwarf. And when they were cross-pollinated, in first generation, all the plants, 100% plants were tall. As a result, this was decided, it was concluded that tallness is dominating over dwarfness, which is the recessive trait. In this way, he chose seven traits for his experiments and out of these traits, one of the forms would be dominating, the other form would be recessive. And one example I gave you for the height, one was for tallness, the other was dwarfness. Similarly, for the color of the flower, some of the flowers were violet and some of the flowers were white. And when they were cross-pollinated using the same process of emasculation, in first generation, all the flowers were violet. This means violet color of the flower is dominating over the white color of the flower. This way, seven traits were studied by Mendel and these are known as the basics of the principles of inheritance. Now we shall talk about the law of dominance first. As I just discussed, out of seven traits, one of the form appeared in the first generation. The second form did not appear in the generation, in the first generation, and that was supposed to be called as recessive. So we'll take the example of again, a tall pea plant was crossed with the dwarf pea plant. And in first generation, all the plants were tall. Now, if we have to make the cross, in a very, very systematic way, we need to form the cross by making the alphabets. Mendel used capital letters for representing the genes, which he called as factors because by that time, genes were not discovered. So he called them as factors. Now we know that factors are actually genes. Since genes are found in pairs on chromosomes, he took them in pairs. This is the tall plant, this is the dwarf plant. In sexually reproducing organisms, at the time of gamete formation, the number of chromosome is reduced to half. So this double capital T, we have to write it as single T. Similarly, here also, it has to be small t. And when we cross them, we will get this kind of representation. Now, when we represent the, the cross in this form, this is known as genotypic representation. Genotypic representation means when we write about the genes, whether they are in capitals or in small letters. Capital means dominating and small letters means recessive trait. And in F1, that is the first generation, all plants, 100% plants were tall. So in this Cross, it is very clearly mentioned that out of two traits from the parents, only first, only one appeared in the first generation and here it was tallness. Therefore, tallness is dominating or over recessive trait. We can have many more examples explaining the same law of dominance where we will see that only one trait appears in the first generation. Both the traits do not appear in the first generation. We can take the example of a pea plant having violet flower, when crossed with a white flowered plant, capital V, capital V, 
small v small v when we make the gametes since reduction division will take place at the time of gamete formation so the number of chromosome will be reduced to half and when the gametes fuse at the time of sexual reproduction this is first generation all plants will bear violet flowers so this also proves the law of dominance that out of two forms only one form appears in the first generation which is said to be dominating the one which hides or which does not show in first generation is said to be recessive let us talk about certain basics of the inheritance in fact this is the terminology which is used in genetics and the first terminology is alleles now what do you mean by alleles alleles means alternative form of the same gene which are slightly different from each other for example for the height of the plant there are two alleles one is the tall allele and the other is the dwarf allele so alleles means alternative forms of same gene so if you talk about this particular cross there are two alleles for the color of flower one is the violet allele and the other is the white allele and in first generation only one allele appears the second allele does not appear because its its exposure its uh, presence is hidden so this is the first term which we must know that is alleles alternative for alternative forms of same gene and this is one of the examples we can take the example of flower color also we can take the shape of the seed as the example we can take the color of the seed also as an example so there are various forms for which we have got two alleles that means two alternative forms of the same gene second terminology is genotype genotype means genetic makeup of an organism which can be either homozygous or heterozygous homozygous means when the same allele is duplicated this is called as homozygous or pure form this is also homozygous parent because the allele is duplicated small v and small v they are repeated this is known as the homozygous state or the pure state but if the same allele is not duplicated that is called as the heterozygous the second one or the hybrid organism we can see in first generation all plants they bore violet flower but they were all hybrid because same allele is not duplicating one is capital v and the other is small v so second terminology of the inheritance is genotype that means genetic makeup of an organism which is of two types homozygous and heterozygous homozygous means when the same allele is duplicated in an individual and heterozygous means when the same allele is not duplicated in the organism third terminology is phenotype phenotype means external appearance of an organism if we happen to see a plant and we describe it we can say it's a tall plant with green leaves which are oval shaped it has got red flowers and so many other things which we, which which we can simply explain by seeing at the plant so whatever we see in the plant and we explain externally that's what is called as the phenotype that is the external appearance of an organism so i repeat phenotype means external appearance of an organism when we describe a flower or a plant or any organism externally that is what is known as phenotype next is monohybrid dihybrid and trihybrid crosses 
while studying the laws of inheritance, while studying about inheritance, these terminologies are very, very important and you will gradually come across these terminologies and you should be knowing about the inheritance. If you don't know about these terminologies, you are bound to, uh, you will not be able to understand the entire thing properly. Monohybrid means, mono means one. When we consider single character during inheritance of an organism, that is known as monohybrid. When we consider two traits at the same time, while studying the cross during inheritance, and when we consider three traits at a time during inheritance of traits, that's known as trihybrid cross. I'll give you one example. If we cross a tall plant with a dwarf plant, during the experiment of inheritance, this is the example of monohybrid cross because we are considering single character. We are simply considering the height of the plant. We are not taking any other character into consideration. If we consider tall plant with violet flower is crossed with the dwarf plant with white flower, this is the example of dihybrid cross since we have taken two traits into consideration. One is the height of the plant and the other is the color of the flower. So we have taken two traits into consideration at the time of inheritance of traits. Therefore, it is a dihybrid cross. If we, ta if we add one more dimension to it, a tall plant with violet flower and round seeds is crossed with a dwarf plant with white flowers and wrinkled seeds. Now here we have taken the shape of the seeds into consideration at the time of inheritance of traits, at the time of cross. Therefore, this is the example of trihybrid cross. So when we take single character during inheritance of a, of a trait, that's monohybrid, if we consider two traits at a time, this is dihybrid cross. And when we have three traits together studying at the time of cross formation, this is called as trihybrid cross. Next terminology is back cross and test cross. If we have F1 hybrid, F1 stands for first generation we cross it with either of the parents. This is known as back cross. If first generation is crossed with very specifically with the recessive parent, it is known as test cross. We can understand this with the help of an example. We will take the height of the plant wherein in first experiment we showed that the F1 was heterozygous and it appeared to be tall. Either we can cross it with the dominating parent that is capital T, capital T or we can cross it with small t, small t that is the dwarf plant. So when F1 hybrid is crossed with either of the parents that is either capital T, capital T or small t, small t in both cases these crosses are called as back crosses. But this particular cross with the recessive parent is known as test cross. I repeat, when F1 hybrid is crossed with either of the parents, either dominating parent or recessive parent, these crosses are known as back crosses. But when this is specifically crossed with the recessive parent, it is known as test cross. Now the question arises, why is it called as test cross? What is the reason behind calling it as a test cross? Test cross is called so because it is used to test the genotype of an individual. I'll explain this with the help of one example just now. Before that, I would like to make one statement. After reading about back cross and test cross, can we simply say that all back crosses are not test crosses, but all test crosses are back crosses? So this statement is very important. 
all back crosses are not test crosses, but all test crosses are back crosses. So, if this statement is understood, we have understood the difference between back cross and test cross. I repeat, all back crosses are not test crosses, but all test crosses are back crosses. We can study this in detail with the help of an example. A violet flower, a violet flowering pea plant has been given to you. How will you ensure its genotype? So, a plant, violet flowering plant, pea plant is given to you and you have been asked to find out whether it is pure violet or it is hybrid. In other words, whether it is homozygous or heterozygous. So, what will you do? As I said, we will subject this flower, this flowering plant to test cross because test cross is used to test the genotype of an individual. So, we will subject this violet flowering plant to the test cross and we will find out the results. Let us see the results. So, we can have case 1 and case 2. We can call it as possibility 1 and possibility 2 also. There are two possibilities. We do not know this flowering plant which is given to us which is violet. Either it is homozygous or it is heterozygous. Let us imagine it is homozygous that is case, case 1 or possibility 1. Capital V, capital V. So, this is first possibility. We assume that it is pure or homozygous. Now, it has to be subjected to test cross. Test cross means with recessive parent. Recessive parent means small v, small v. When we make the gametes, we have to reduce the number of chromosomes to half. So, we will make it half. Similarly, here also we will make it half. As a result, in this case, we will get all violet flowers, all plants bearing violet flowers. That means 100 percent plants in this generation will have violet flowers. Second possibility is, let us assume the violet flower which is given to us is not homozygous, it is heterozygous. So, we write capital V, small v. It is crossed with recessive parent that is small v, small v. We make the gametes here. Two types of gametes are formed, capital V and small v. And here only one type of gametes are formed that is small v. Now, when we cross them, We will see that 50 percent of the flowers are violet be flower bearing plants and 50 percent are white flower bearing plants. That means the ratio is 1 is to 1. So, after subjecting the violet flowered plant whose genotype is unknown to us, we subjected it to test cross. If we find that all plants in first generation are violet flowering plants, that means the genotype of the individual is homozygous or the fl uh, violet flowering plant which has been given to you is homozygous in condition. Whereas, after subjecting the heterozygous case with the recessive parent, we found the generations, the next generation in the ratio 1 is to 1. That means 50 percent of the plants were violet flowering, flower bearing plants and 50 percent of them were white flower bearing plants and the ratio comes to be 1 is to 1 and this proves that the given plant is heterozygous. Now, I hope you have understand, understood that if the ratio after test cross is coming 100 percent, the given flower is, the given flowering plant is pure or homozygous and if the ratio is 1 is to 1, the given flowering plant is heterozygous. This clearly shows since test cross is used to find out the genotype of an individual, 
Therefore, it has been called as the test cross. We may get many kinds of questions based on the test cross. Test cross is used to find out the genotype of an individual and with the help of this example, you might have understood that in test cross, after the test cross is done, if we have all the plants, 100% plants with violet flowering plants, that means it is the given plant is homozygous, its genotype is known to us now and if the ratio comes to be 1 is to 1, that means it is heterozygous or it is hybrid. So today children, I have told you about the principles of inheritance, the basics and only the law of dominance and I hope you have understood. So you have to emulate it and you have to kind of revise it. घर बैठे पाए राष्ट्रीय मुक्त विद्यालय शिक्षा संस्थान यानी NIOS में एडमिशन वो भी एकदम आसान तरीके से जिससे शिक्षार्थियों को होगी समय और धन दोनों की बचत NIOS से शिक्षा कभी भी कहीं भी शिक्षार्थियों क्या आप जानते हैं NIOS में एडमिशन लेने का सरल और सुगम तरीका जिससे शिक्षार्थियों को ऑनलाइन प्रवेश लेने में सहूलियत मिलती है NIOS में प्रवेश की प्रक्रिया पूर्णतया ऑनलाइन है शिक्षार्थी घर बैठे इंटरनेट द्वारा प्रवेश के लिए सबसे पहले NIOS की वेबसाइट www.nios.ac.in पर लॉगिन करें अपना ईमेल आईडी और पासवर्ड डालकर अपना पंजीकरण करें पंजीकरण के बाद लॉगिन करने पर ऑनलाइन प्रवेश हेतु आवेदन पत्र खुलेगा आवेदन पत्र को निर्देशानुसार भरें और प्रिंट आउट लें। इस प्रिंट आउट पर अपनी फोटो संलग्न करें ऑनलाइन प्रवेश के लिए शुल्क हेतु भुगतान के तरीके हैं क्रेडिट कार्ड के द्वारा डेबिट कार्ड के द्वारा राष्ट्रकृत बैंक के ड्राफ्ट के माध्यम से जो कि सचिव एन नई दिल्ली या नोएडा के पक्ष में देय हो भरे हुए आवेदन पत्र के साथ साथ डिमांड ड्राफ्ट और संलग्न किए जाने वाले दस्तावेज हैं जन्म रजिस्ट्रार के जिला कार्यालय से जारी जन्म प्रमाण पत्र की सत्यापित प्रति जिसमें जन्म तिथि अंकित हो पिछले विद्यालय से प्राप्त विद्यालय छोड़ने का प्रमाण पत्र जिसमें आवेदक की जन्म तिथि लिखी हो प्रवेश फॉर्म का प्रिंट आउट एन के संबद्ध क्षेत्र केंद्रों पर 10 दिनों में पहुंच जाना चाहिए अन्यथा उचित दस्तावेज ना लगे होने पर आवेदन फॉर्म रद्द किया जा सकता है प्रवेश प्रक्रिया की पुष्टि होने के बाद शिक्षार्थियों को परिचय पत्र व अध्ययन सामग्री डाक द्वारा तुरंत पहुंचाई जाती है ऑनलाइन प्रवेश एक बहुत ही सुगम और सुविधाजनक प्रवेश प्रणाली है ऑनलाइन ऑन टाइम फॉर सेफ एंड सिक्योर एडमिशन हिंदुस्तान के हर कोने में नौजवानों के पास NIOS has been providing opportunities to youth for their development. Some of them have brought great laurels to the institute. With NIOS, many Divyang students have proved their strength. Join NIOS and make a difference.